G'day Extension Mathletes, welcome back to the channel for a, another free video lesson in the Extension 1 topic. Today I'm going to take you through a quick little lesson on how to differentiate with inverse trigonometric functions. This will lead into an integration video on the same topic in a week or two, so make sure you watch this before you watch that, otherwise you might be a bit lost. Okay, let's start off with an intro to differentiating uh, inverse sine, also called arc sine. All right, so we're going to find the first derivative of y equals sine inverse of x. We're going to start off by rearranging this equation by essentially multiplying both sides by sine. So the left-hand side becomes sine y, and the right-hand side is now just x because the sine and the sine inverse cancel out. We're doing the long way first, and then I'll show you the shortcut we're going to use for every other um, example. So feel free to skip ahead if I'm boring you. I'm very sorry. Okay, we're then going to flip that around and say x equals sine y and we're going to do the derivative of x with respect to y because we know what the derivative of sine is the derivative of sine is cos so we have dx on dy equals cos now we were trying to get the derivative of y so we were trying to find dy on dx so we'll just take the reciprocal of both sides so we have dy on dx equals 1 over cos y now small issue here is that our question or our starting point was in terms of x and our derivative here is in terms of y. So it would be better if we could re-express this to have our answer in terms of x. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, all right, sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one. This is called the Pythagorean identity. If we rearrange this, we get cos squared y is equal to one minus sine squared. And that gives us that cos y is the square root of one minus sine squared. Just dealing with positive values for now because we don't need a plus minus to complicate things. Um, okay, so putting that down here, where we see a cos y, we can change that with a 1 minus sine squared. And keep in mind that over here, we had that sine y was also an expression for x if we rearrange our starting equation. So we have cos y is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared, and sine squared is equal to x. So we have 1 minus x squared as a substitute for cos y, and that can go on the bottom here, which gives us the derivative of sine inverse is 1 over the square root of one minus x squared. So it seems a little strange at first because we're starting with a trigonometric function and we're ending up with a derivative which has no trigonometry in it, but it does, it's just kind of hidden in this square and square root. So going forth, we have the inverse, inverse sine x, derivative is one over the square root of one minus x squared. Now that's our one we're gonna use for sine. For cos, it is very, very, very similar, except it's negative. So the derivative of cos inverse x is one over the square root of one minus x squared with a negative out the front. Tan inverse is the weird one. The derivative of tan inverse is equal to one over one plus x squared. No square roots needed. Not gonna go through the long version of those two because you don't really need to know how these work. You just need to know how to use them. And that's what today's really focusing on. So these are our starting off formulas. The ones on the HSC reference sheet are a bit more generic. They have this in terms of functions. This is just the exact same thing, but where there's an x or an x squared, they've replaced it with an f of x. And then up top, you've got f dash x. This is just reminding you to do the chain rule, which is telling you when you differentiate a function of a function, don't forget to multiply your answer by the derivative of the inside function. So we're doing the exact same thing as before, but we're just multiplying by the derivative of the thing inside the sine inverse, cos inverse, or tan inverse, which we are gonna do plenty of examples uh, on very shortly. Okay, let's go through a bunch of questions and try builds of confidence with answering these types of questions. Here is our first one. We have the derivative of y equals two cos inverse x. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are just going to differentiate cos inverse x using the rules that we had on the previous slide. And we're just gonna put a two out the front. So the derivative is really just two times the derivative of cos inverse x, which as we saw before, is just the same thing as sine square, so, sorry, the same thing as sine inverse differentiated, but with a negative. So we have negative one over the square root of one minus x squared. Multiplying that by two gives us this for our answer for the first one. Okay, starting off nice and easy. Moving on to question B now, which is the derivative. We're gonna differentiate arc sine. Keep in mind that arc sine is just another way of sine sine inverse. So this is the same thing as sine to the negative one of x over three. Okay, so let's apply our formula from before. We have the derivative being one over the square root of one minus the subject of the inverse sine. Last time it was x and now it's x over three. So instead of doing x squared, we have x over three squared. Um, now, because we did that, we also need to multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. So when it was just x, you're just multiplying by one, which doesn't really do anything. But because our inside function now is x over three, 
the derivative of that is a third, so we need to multiply it by a third. So we're doing the chain rule here. We differentiate the arc sign bit first, and then we differentiate the inside and multiply. Um, okay, so what that does is we have an x squared over nine on the bottom here, because we're squaring x and squaring three. Now the three on the bottom, what we wanna do is we wanna put this inside the square root. So we're gonna do something very clever here. We're gonna write this three as the square root of nine, because we know that we are allowed to multiply two um, thirds together. So multiplying this, the nine is going to multiply with the one and the minus x squared over nine. So multiplying them, we're gonna have nine times one is nine, and then nine times x squared over nine, the times nine and the divided by nine cancel out, leaving us with one over the square root of nine minus x squared. Now that was a bit of a trick, and personally this is not the scenic route that I like to take each time. I really recommend to my students, even though it's not on the reference sheet, I get them to memorize this. If you have, uh, inverse sine of x divided by a number, your derivative is gonna be the same thing as before, but instead of one minus x squared, it's just a squared minus x squared. So once again, this thing here in red is not on the HSC reference sheet, but I really recommend committing it to memory because it can turn this three or four step question into a really quick and easy one step. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for a lot of these. And when we're gonna be doing some integrating in a week or two, this red thing here is gonna be really useful. So just trust me, memorize it, it's worth it. On to question C, we have the derivative of y equals 10 inverse of x over five. Once again, I'm gonna show you the scenic route and then I'm gonna show you the shortcut that I recommend to my students to make these questions. Yeah, really quick and easy. Starting off with one over one plus x squared. That's our usual derivative for 10 inverse, except instead of having an x squared on the bottom, now our function is actually x over five. So I'm doing x over five squared, just like last time where I had to multiply by a third because that was the derivative of the inner function. Now the inner function is x over five, so the derivative of that is a fifth, so I need to multiply by one fifth. So what that does now is we have one on the top, we have one plus x squared over 25 on the bottom, and the bottom is gonna get multiplied by five because we have one fifth. So that one turns into a five, and when we multiply this fraction by five, we get five x squared over 25, which is x squared over five. Now, we don't really like to have fractions inside our fractions if we're trying to have a nice and neat simplified answer. So the way we're gonna fix that is we're gonna take the numerator and denominator and multiply them both by five. That's gonna get rid of the fraction on the bottom of the fraction. So this x squared over five will now just turn into an x squared. This five will turn into a 25 and the top turns into a five and that's our nice simplified answer. Just like last time, I don't wanna do these three or four steps each time with all the multiplying or the simplifying. So what I remember is just that if we have the uh, if we have tan inverse of x divided by a number, the derivative of this is the number divided by the number squared plus x squared. So once again, bit in red, not on the reference sheet, but really highly recommend that you memorize it because it's really, really useful. And it would take this you know two minute question into a two second question. So really useful, highly recommended from a graphmatics. Okay, and on for D, we have the derivative of cos inverse of x cubed. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're gonna do our regular um, differentiation for cos inverse, but then we just have to remember to multiply by the derivative of the inner function again. So setting up our structure, we once again have one over the square root of one minus, instead of x squared now, it's actually x cubed being squared. Because this one was a cos inverse, not a sine inverse, we have to have put a negative out the front. And then like I said, you've got to remember to do the chain rule, which is also multiply by the derivative of the inner function. In this case, the derivative of x cubed is going to be three x squared. So we're multiplying by three x squared. So that simplifies really quickly because we have a three x squared on the top. We've got a negative at the front. And when you square x cubed, you get x to the power of six. And that's already nice and neat. There's not really anything else we can do here to simplify. So that's a very, very good looking answer. And we are ready to, ready to move on. Okay, moving on to example E, we have the derivative of x squared, 10 inverse, arc 10, same thing, 10 inverse of 2x. Okay, now we are hitting a problem where we are trying to differentiate a product. We have x squared product with 10 inverse of 2x. So of course, just like in the advanced course or in the year 11 course, if we wanna differentiate a product, we've gotta use the product rule. So the way the product rule works is we start off by taking the first half, which is the x squared, and we differentiate it. The second half, which is the 10 inverse, we leave it alone. You can write 10 inverse, you can write arc 10, it's completely up to you. There's the first half done. Differentiate that, leave that alone. Now we put a plus and we do the opposite. We're going to leave the x squared alone 
as an x squared and we are going to differentiate the arc tan 2x. So the way that works is we do a 1 over 1 plus 2x squared and then I have to multiply that by 2 because 2 is the derivative of the inner function of the arc tan. So 2x differentiates to 2 and that's why I'm multiplying by a 2 there. Okay, there's our product rule. Now we're just going to try and tidy things up. So at the front we have 2x arc tan 2x and then simplifying our fraction we can put the x squared and the 2 because they're both multiplying we can put them on the numerator so we have 2x squared and on the bottom we have 1 plus 2x all squared which is 1 plus 4x squared so there's our nice simplified full marks answer using the differentiation of tan inverse as well as the product rule okay finishing off before we do a quick HSC question we're just going to do three they're called challenge questions they're not that much of a step up you just got to be a little bit more careful so three of these Here's the first one. We have the uh, derivative of sine inverse of cos x. So rolling through our formula once again, sine inverse differentiates to 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever's inside the sine inverse squared. Sometimes it's x, sometimes it's x over 3. This time it is cos x. So cos x is being squared. Um, okay. That's really all we can do here. I guess if you wanted to be out, oh, sorry, we're not done here actually. We also need to multiply by the derivative of the inside of the function, which is cos x. And the derivative of cos x, last time I checked, was negative sine x. So we're multiplying by negative sine x. Now we can actually simplify this a little bit because on the bottom, you've got the square root of one minus cos squared x. And one minus cos squared, as we already talked about today, is another way of writing sine squared if you rearrange the Pythagorean identity. So we can change the bottom from 1 minus cos squared to be sine squared. We can put the negative sign that's multiplying on the top. And now on the bottom, the square root of sine squared is equal to sine. So on the bottom, we have sine x. On the top, we have negative sine x. So the two sine x's are going to cancel each other out, divide away, and leave us with a final answer of negative 1. So the derivative of sine inverse of cos x is actually just equal to minus 1. So fun fact. Okay, on to the next challenge question, which is the derivative of tan inverse of e to the x. So starting off with our form for tan inverse, normally we do 1 over 1 plus x squared. This time it's going to be 1 over 1 plus e to the x squared, because that's the inside of the tan inverse function. Just like with most of these questions, we now need to remember to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. And thankfully, the derivative of e to the x is really easy. It's its own derivative. So e to the x differentiates to e to the x. So we are multiplying by e to the power of x. Not much we can do here. We can put the e to the x on the top. And on the bottom, we have e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x. And that's really all we can do here. It's a nice looking answer. There's no more simplifying that needs to be done here. Okay, and the last challenge question. We are differentiating the natural log of cos inverse, aka arc cos of x. All right, so if you've been listening in uh, the advanced course and even in a little bit in year 11, you were hopefully taught that to differentiate a natural log, all you need is a fraction. Okay, logs differentiate to fractions. On the bottom of the fraction, you do what is inside the logarithm, which in this case is arc cos x. On the top of the fraction, you do the derivative of what's inside your logarithm. So we're going to have to put arc cos x on the bottom or cos inverse, whatever you prefer. On the top of the fraction, we need to put the derivative of arc cos x, which as we already established is negative one over the square root of one minus x squared. Um, yeah, there's not really much we can do with that. I don't know if I'm gonna do anything more with that. Uh, all I'm gonna do is just um, simplify the fractions a little bit. When you have a fraction on top of a fraction, you can sync this uh, denominator down below. So this is kind of like saying a over b over c is equal to a over bc. I'm just putting the 1 minus x squared inside the square root onto the bottom. And now instead of having a fraction on top of a fraction, I've just got one fraction. Doesn't really look that much nicer, but it is technically more simplified because we don't like to have fractions in our fractions, as I've already said a few times today. So that's probably the best we can do for our answer for part C. Okay, finishing off with an HC question from 2022, which was only a few years ago. This was a band 4, so like an E2 or E3 level question. We have um, find the equation of a tangent to the curve y equals x arc tan x at the point with coordinates 1, pi on 4. We want to give our answer in the form y equals mx plus c. Okay, if you are familiar with finding the equation of tangents and you've been listening so far in this lesson and you want a bit of a challenge, by all means, pause the video 
and have a crack at this one yourself or you can just watch me go through it because you know I can't stop you it's a free country okay so to find the equation of a tangent first thing we need to find is the gradient of the tangent and the way you find the gradient of a tangent is by differentiating the curve so first thing we need to do here is differentiate x arc tan x once again because we have a product we have x multiplying by arc tan x we need to use the product rule so let's go forward and use our product rule all in one hit we're leaving the x alone to start off with and we are differentiating the arc tan x to be 1 over 1 plus x squared you could have done this part second or first it doesn't matter because there's a plus in the middle so x is left alone arc tan x is differentiated right here then I do a plus and I differentiate the x into a 1 and I leave the arc tan x alone. Like I've said, you can write arc tan or you can write tan inverse. It's completely up to you. Both are accepted. Okay, there's not much we can do here just in terms of simplifying. We can put the x on the top of the fraction here to have x over 1 plus x squared. 1 times tan inverse x is just tan inverse x. And this is our derivative function or our gradient function, I should call it. Because if we want to find the gradient of a tangent at a point, all we need to do is take this derivative and substitute in our x value. So for this question, it's nice and easy because our x value of our point is just x equals 1. So if we take x equal 1 and we put it into our derivative, we're going to get 1 over 1 plus 1 squared. Then we add to that the value of 10 inverse 1. Now, 10 inverse 1 is asking you what's the value or what's the angle, sorry, that goes with 10 and gets you an answer of 1. And if you've been paying attention in advance, you know the answer is 45 degrees. And we write 45 degrees as pi on 4 radians. The fraction turns into a half because we have 1 over 1 plus 1, so that's 1 over 2. So our derivative gives us our tangent gradient of a half plus 45 degrees. But because we're doing, um, because we're doing calculus, we're going to work in radians. So we don't write 45 degrees, we write pi on 4. Okay, now we have our gradients, we have our point. So now is the time to use the good old fashioned, um, oh sorry, I should have simplified this a little bit by turning the a half into two out of four and then expressing it as one fraction, just to make my next step a little bit easier, which the next step is, as I said, to use the point gradient formula, which looks like this. This is our equation we use when we have a gradient and a point. Um, okay, our point is one pi on four. So x one is one, y one is pi on four. Our gradient, as we figured out over here, gradient is equal to 2 plus pi over 4. So let's chuckle that in. On the left-hand side, we have y minus pi on 4, gradients of 2 plus pi on 4. For our bracket, we have x minus 1. Now, as much as I would love to simplify this equation by multiplying everything by 4, the question wants me to leave my answer in y equals mx plus c. So my goal now is to try and make y the subject. So to do that, I'm going to have to expand out the right-hand side and then add across the pi on 4 and then simplify my answer as much as I possibly can. So expanding out the right-hand side, we have 2 plus pi over 4 times x, which is right here. Then we have minus 2 plus pi over 4 times 1, which is right here. The minus pi on 4 on the left has been added across to become a plus pi on 4. Okay, to combine these two fractions, because um, these both have a 4 on them and they're both constants, we can try and merge these together. And what's going to happen is we're going to have pi on 4 um, and minus 2 plus pi all together. So combining these two together, I like to put the positive one first. I think it makes it a little bit easier. And then the minus second, minus 2 plus pi is just there. All in one fraction with 4 as a denominator. Now what's cool about this end bit is when you expand it out, you get pi minus 2 minus pi. So these two pi's are going to cancel out and all you're going to be left with is a 2 over 4 which is equal to a half. So your best possible simplified answer is y equals 2 plus pi over 4x and then with a y intercept a c of minus a half on the end. If you pause that, had a crack yourself and got the same answer or the same answer but it looks a little bit different, congratulations on getting 3 out of 70 on the 2022 HSC. You're doing really well, you should be very proud of yourself. Okay, that's all for this quick lesson on differentiating inverse trigonometry. Like I said, come back in a week or two to watch the video, which is going to be doing this backwards, which is integration. So yeah, if you want to stick around for that, by all means, subscribe if you're not already. And I hope to see you in the next video and subsequent future Extension 1 videos to try and help you boost your HSC. So thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. And um, of course, not forever.